Thank you. Thank you. I'm Father Mitch Pacwa, and welcome to EWTN Live, where we bring you guests from around the world. Our guests tonight are two out of the three co-founders of the Halo app. This is the most downloaded Catholic mobile app in the App Store right now, with over 7 million downloads. It's also the top prayer and meditation app in the whole world. With its audio-guided prayer, scripture, meditation, mental health, music, athletic, and sleep content, Halo is designed to be an accessible tool for anyone to deepen their personal relationship with God. And it's already been used to pray more than 150 million times around the world in English, Spanish, Polish, and Portuguese. And they are planning to include more languages in the future. So here to tell us more about this wonderful app, please welcome Alex Jones and Alessandro DeSanto. Alex, welcome. Thanks for having us. Alessandro, good to have you here. Good to have you here. Welcome. This is a cool app and a cool story. But I want folks to understand where this is coming from. How did this get started? Yeah, so it's... um pretty intertwined with our own faith journeys. Uh, So I'll start with mine. I I was raised Catholic by my saint of a mother, um, but unfortunately fell away from my faith in high school and college. What what pushed you to do that? Yeah, it was it was it was probably a few different things. Uh, You know, part of it was just the culture, the friends, my peer group uh, generally were atheist and agnostic. A part of it was, you know, teenage, young adult rebellion. I kind of identified with the new atheists, the Dawkins. You know, hey, we don't have to believe this stuff. Our parents and their parents believed just because they were, they thought that they were supposed to. Um, and a part of it was I, I never really, I never really had any spiritual uh, underpinning or theological underpinning to fight back against any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I got I got swept up in it. I probably unfortunately would have called myself atheist or agnostic for most of high school and, and college. Okay. Um, but yeah, then for whatever reason, I got pretty into meditation. And my mind, unfortunately, did not first go to St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, but uh, to kind of uh, secular meditation. And there were a couple apps that were out that kind of helped guide you through secular meditation. I tried them, and uh, you know, I, I tried meditating. And every time I would meditate, oddly, my mind would feel pulled towards something spiritual, uh, an image of the cross, the Trinity, uh, Christ, it, which for me was very strange. I, I you know, still would have considered myself agnostic. Uh, and so I, th- I thought I had this revolutionary question, and I went to priests, brothers and sisters, friends who were deeper in uh, their faith life than I was, and asked, you know, hey, is there any way there's some intersection here between this meditation thing and this faith thing? And pretty much everybody laughed at me and said, uh, yeah, it's called prayer. We've been doing it for 2,000 years. Uh, didn't you go to church growing up? Um, and, you know, I had heard of prayer. Uh, obviously, the things that I'd memorized as a kid and, you know, hey, God, thanks for stuff. Sorry for stuff. I need help with stuff. But I started learning about this really deep and beautiful tradition of contemplative and meditative prayer that I'd really never heard of before. So Lexia Divina, Ignatian Spirituality, Carmelite Spirituality. And I Googled how to do Lexia Divina, randomly opened up a Bible. Matthew 6 uh, was meditating on the Lord's Prayer. And uh, Hallow was the word that stuck out that I, that I meditated on. And it, it just changed my life, brought me to tears, brought me back to my faith, changed everything about what I value, what I care about. It's a core part of who I am. Um, and yeah, it's tough like any prayer, conversa- any prayer experience to put into words, but... Um, I knew that I needed to do that for the rest of my life. And these apps I had found pretty helpful in the sense that it, it felt like you were praying with somebody. It felt like you had a, a guide through it. You could access some of the world's leading guides and mm-hmm. the comfort of your own home for 10 minutes. And you could really dive pretty deep. It's like a, a retreat every morning instead of having to go to a, a meditation studio or go on a retreat. And so we tried to build it, you know, selfishly just for 
for me and for us to start. But we each kind of have our, our own different versions and, and journeys through it. Alessandro has his uh, own. Yeah, Alessandro, uh, how did you get involved in all this? 100%. So Alex and I went to college together. We're uh, best friends, lived together at school, best men in each other's weddings. And whereas Alex had a falling away experience, I did not. So I was born in a large Catholic uh, Italian-American family, hence my name, and um, grew up very, very culturally Catholic, Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. And I always believed intellectually in the truth of the faith. I took Aquinas as my confirmation saint. Um, never doubted that the- Not the good Italian. <laughs> amazing, amazing, just the best. Uh, and the culinary uh, experience uh, helps along the way. But the, I never doubted the truth of the faith, but I never allowed it to permeate my actual day-to-day -day decisions, the life of discernment, of searching for God's will in your life. So that allowed me to go down a, a very different career path. I actually started on Wall Street. I worked at a big investment bank in New York, was an investor and was living kind of the high-strung rat race of a life. I was working seven days a week, 90, 100-hour work weeks, very regularly, and I was making a lot of money, but was very stressed. And so Alex, in his experience getting into meditation, said, hey man, you're pretty stressed, you should try meditation, this is helpful for that. And I tried you know, some of these apps, 10 minutes of silence, breathing exercises, and the way I described that experience is that it was helpful in that you know, breathing deeply and sitting still for 10 minutes is physiologically a good thing to do as a human being. But one, there's some real spiritual dangers of that approach, which I now recognize more. But honestly, in those just 10 minutes of silence a day, these much deeper, kind of small v vocational questions of, what are you doing with your life? Do you ever stop to think not what you wanna do, but what God might be calling you to do? And that was a big, scary set of questions that I didn't know how to answer. And so foolishly, I just, stopped meditating and went back to working all the time, which is obviously not the recommended approach. But then as Alex had his reversion through contemplative and meditative prayer, he would call me up, I would host Sunday dinners for his wife, my wife, myself, and he was asking me these questions about uh, meditative prayer, contemplative prayer, had I heard of St. Teresa of Avila, had I heard of St. John of the Cross, these approaches to prayer, which I had not, admittedly, despite all of my kind of um, cultural background in, in Catholicism. And as soon as I picked that up, particularly Alexa Divina for me, it clicked as the tool that I was missing to answer those big questions of God, what do you want from my life? Um, and experience scripture as, as sacrament and, and searching uh, for God's will. So in a different way, came back to Christ um, in a spiritual way, even though I had that, that um, faith as a foundation. And like Alex said, the more we were spending time doing this, the more we wanted to uh, have a resource to guide through all these different approaches. Yeah. Uh, our friends and family wanted to start using it. And then ultimately that led us to discerning a, a call to quit our jobs, literally walked into to the office one day and you know, told my boss, you know, we gotta go do this thing and help the world pray. They thought I had lost my mind. Uh, the rest of the team has similar experiences. And, and so we launched the app in December 2018, just over four years ago. And you, know, you mentioned all the numbers up front. It's been crazy, just the, the blessings that have come from that. Just, uh, literally one million people downloaded the app last month now. It's, uh, it's been crazy. One million new folks. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah, of December, wow. yeah. That's, that's pretty nice, that's pretty nice. And actually, you were telling me that you have a pretty significant staff working on this. Yeah, we've been really blessed. We've got a group of really incredible mission-driven folks. Uh, we actually don't do the hard work. We've got a great content team with, uh, it's very spiritual and uh, rooted in great theology, great design team, development team. So we've got 55 folks or so now working on it full time, which has been crazy. 55. It started with, you know, three of us uh, in my studio apartment. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been a ride. So this is how it got started. What is it? that somebody would find if they go to this app? What would, what would when people in our audience, what would they look for when they come to this app? Yeah, it's a great question and it's tough to answer. At the beginning we started and- well, Let me just stop yeah, you there, just so folks know, because you know, some of us senior citizens have to realize you have to go to the little app store on yeah. your phone. Right and you have to find it in its hallow yeah. app, yeah. right? So it's, it's if on the uh, iPhone or on your Android phone, those are the two different types of phones, you would go to the little blue A, which is the app store, or the little uh, Google Play button, which is the Play Store, and then you type in hallow, like hallow be thy name, H-A-L-L-O-W, 
and it's the purple one. It says Hello Prayer and Meditation. And then you click the little download thing and, and you get download. Actually, it's been a blessing. How much for does us. it cost to download? Free to download. Oh, good. I yeah. like the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can upgrade to unlock the full suite of things, but it's important for us to always have a free version that anybody can use daily forever. So. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, once you get into it, it really depends where you are. If you've never prayed before, we have a little intro challenge that kind of guides you into contemplative or meditative prayer. If you're praying a holy hour, we have holy hours, uh, music sessions, sleep sessions at night. Father Mike's Bible in a Year or Catechism in a Year is a really popular one. Mm -hmm. His homilies, Bishop Barron's homilies. Jim Caviezel does these really powerful meditations on the Passion of the Christ, which is really beautiful. Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen. Uh, who's who's Jonathan anime. Rumi? Uh, the Chosen is a, a TV uh, streaming series about the life of Christ Okay. Uh, that's been really popular over the last few years. I think it's 400, 500 million views now. would highly recommend. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, he's the actor who plays Jesus, okay. uh, an incredible man of, of deep Catholic faith and, and uh, a real inspiration. So he does a great job of leading folks. You kind of, you know, you hear these scripture passages over and over again, and to hear them from Jim Caviezel or Jonathan Rumi in kind of their voice of Jesus, it, it brings them to life in a, in a new way. Um, Could we take a look at a clip yeah, by sure. Jonathan Rumi? 100%. Let's take yeah. a look at that. What the? Who are you? Hi, I'm your guide on Hallow, a prayer and meditation app to help you find peace and grow closer to God. I don't remember downloading you. Actually, you downloaded me several months ago, right around the time you downloaded TikTok. We all know how that panned out. Why don't we start with an easy five-minute daily gospel? Take a deep breath and focus your attention on God. Hallow makes it easy to build a daily practice of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Right? Hallow offers all kinds of calming spiritual music, thousands of guided prayers, meditations, Bible stories, sermons, Bible in a year, and best of all, yours truly. Yeah, it's like I'm with the actual Jesus. I'm not the actual Jesus. I just play him on TV. Oh, oh I know. I know you know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallow can help you slow down and find peace, even on chaotic days, or as I like to call them, days. <laughs> Preach! Oh, I couldn't. I'm not prepared. Well, if you insist. <clears throat> Blessed are the... No, <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Just a figure of speech. Oh, you, you put me on the spot. I mean, I, I actually know the whole thing. I listen tonight. It has a bill to it. That was just the first... <laughs> At night, Hallow has sleep meditations, night prayer, and Bible stories to help you close your day with God. Mm. Let the weight of the day fall away. Give your cares and worries over to God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall... That's that pretty fun cool. <laughs> we now, had fun with that one. Yeah, it looks like you had a lot of fun. He looks like a fun guy, yeah, too. Yeah, he is. He's a pretty funny guy. He yeah. did a good job. A lot of that was ad-libbed, so it was pretty fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I think one of the things that really comes out of that, that clip, obviously some attempts at, at humor there, it's really you ask, what will you see in the app? And I think that Alex alluded yeah. to this really is different for everyone. One of the things you'll do when you download the app is answer a little bit about what are you looking for? Where are you on your spiritual journey? And we all have that scriptural call to pray without ceasing, but what you're going through in life is different than what I'm going through, than what my wife is, than my mother is, than my son is. And I think that the beauty of technology, because I think sometimes this idea of combining technology and prayer is somewhat confusing and why would you do that? But the ability to personalize and really bring into the moment of whatever you're going through, how to bring that to God, incorporate prayer into different aspects of life. And so the app gets to know you in that way. But the core experience is find what you wanna pray about, choose how long. So one of the things you saw in the clip was short one minute breaks throughout the day, 
you know, longer nighttime story with kids or family or a rosary, kind of in between. Uh, whatever you have time for, just press play, close your eyes. You can have background music or not, silence. It's really fitting God into your life so that you can put him at the center of everything you do. And one of the things that I, I hope our audience is picking up is this is not an apologetics or theology app as such. It's to help you pray and to learn to listen to what God is saying to you rather than argue about, you know, well, is the Trinity this way or that way? And that's not what this is. There, there, there are a number of good apps for theology and apologetics, and we're, a lot of people are accustomed to that, but this is focusing on learning to listen to God. Yeah, uh, it's actually one of, when, when I was first um, journeying back to my faith, I was talking to a priest and discovering the different types of prayer. And I said, look, I know how to pray. It's, you know, you tell God what you're grateful for or sorry for, or you repeat these things that I memorized as a kid, which are beautiful and powerful. And he said, now, Alex, uh, imagine a world where you came home every day. I think it would have been, we, we would have been engaged at the time. You come home every day to your fiance and you say, hey, honey, I'm thankful for these things. I'm sorry for these things. Um, good night. Or I need help with these things. Good night. How healthy would your relationship be? And I said, yeah, it wouldn't be very healthy at all. <laughs> no. And he said, why? And I was like, well, because 90 be long lasting <laughs> either. 90% <laughs> of my interaction is, hey, honey, how was your day? And then I listen for, you know, an hour, which is great. Uh, she loves to share. I don't love to share. So that's a perfect, that's a perfect, but listening was, is the core part of our relationship. And he said, yeah, now how much more would you want to listen if instead of talking to your wife, you were talking to the creator of the universe who had a plan, who had a will for you? And I was like, yeah, that's fair. And I didn't even really know what listening meant. But yeah, you're right. The, the goal of the app is to try to help you grow deeper in your relationship with God, mm -hmm. which is listening, which is contemplative, meditative, uh, uh, growing in your spirituality. So that's the goal. We have, you know, little reflections and commentaries on scripture to help folks dive deeper into it. But the goal is uh, diving deeper into your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Do you hear back from the users of the app? Yeah, we've, it's been by far the highlight of the last few years working on this. Mm -hmm. We've gotten, I mean, every week we get a note from somebody and it's, it's just life-changingly beautiful uh, what God has been able to do in people's lives. We, there was a woman who had fallen away from her faith for 30 years, hadn't been to Mass, started praying uh, with the app because she saw somebody talking about it on Instagram or something. And she felt this call and this urge to go and return to confession and then she went to Mass the next day for the first time in a few decades. And she said it felt like the Holy Spirit, uh, the app was an arrow sent from the Holy Spirit into yeah. her soul. And there's this beautiful, there's this other woman who, um, she was living in the city. Uh, she was older, probably in her um, 50s, 60s or so, moved out to uh, Georgia um, in the middle of uh, rural Georgia. Wasn't close to any friends or family, no, none of the conveniences she had in the city and she became very angry. And she, had, she was a woman of faith, but uh, she just became so angry, a angry at her husband, angry at herself. She became uh, depressed, uh, addicted to alcohol. And she said it felt like the devil just was getting her at every turn. And she said she, again, saw or heard something through YouTube or some channel and, about the app, and she went out to her car and plugged in her headphones and plus, pressed play, and it felt like God just laid a blanket of peace over her. And when we talked to her, she was 80 days sober. She was trying to be a light of love and charity for her husband and her family. And it was just, uh, she was trying to let God, what Alessandra was talking about, let God into every aspect of, of her life, which was really quite beautiful. And it's a blessing just to be able to see what God does for folks across all age ranges and all stages of life as uh, you open up to him and dedicate time to prayer. I would just add to that uh, the point of no matter what you're going through, I, one of the things that we do is we support uh, parish leadership teams in incorporating prayer into different ministries as well as schools. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll talk to the leaders. And I was talking to one priest who during the pandemic had gotten sick and had to be in quarantine. And this is a 60-year-old pastor, been around the block, uh, but had to be alone for, for two weeks. And for him, you know, he really was overcome by fear in those moments and felt isolation, felt like he, in his own words, couldn't even pick up his rosary. He had been just so fearful in that isolation and you know had been skeptical of using an app to pray as, as a priest for uh, you know a long time but picked it up because all he could do was get to that press play moment he couldn't bring himself to pick up the rosary at that point but as soon as he felt like he had a guide 
he was able to find his way back into his prayer life and from there uh, continue to grow and now uses the app every day. Conversely, I was talking to a campus minister at, in a high school, uh, captain of the football team, senior year, about to graduate going to college, came into his office and said, I just want to let you know, thanks for leading us in prayer with that app because every night I was just struggling. I couldn't get off video games. I couldn't get off TikTok. I was going to bed at 2, 3 o'clock a.m. You know, my physical performance was suffering. My schoolwork was suffering. And I now have a way to close my day with God. And I now I'm going to bed at 10 or 11 instead of 2 or 3. And I close every day with a piece of scripture that allows me to find peace. And so 60-year-old pastor and high school senior football player, mm -hmm. um, we all need peace in our lives. And yeah, Christ yeah. is the only source of that peace. Yeah, given the high amount of drug use, the broken relationships, the, uh, the suicide that's going on, you know, people really need to turn to our Lord. This is a great way to do that. And again, it's sort of a part of a community. I'd like to get another clip because we have a clip that you made on three myths about praying with an app. So let's see if praying with an app has any kind of value to you. Three myths about praying on an app. Myth number one, praying on your phone isn't real worship. As Christians, we know that we can worship God anywhere. And because we spend so much time on our phones anyway, it's really helpful to create a habit of prayer on it. And it's actually enhanced my prayer life. Myth number two, there's no way to focus on your phone. Again, using a prayer app has actually helped me to focus more. I can actually finish the rosary as I'm driving home from work or listen to a daily reading on my break. Myth number three, you shouldn't have someone guide you in prayer. Having help in your prayer life is important whether you're on a phone or not. Through the app, I can listen to the Litany of Trust by the Sisters of Life or Bible in the Year with Father Mike, and it's been extremely helpful to my prayer life. Check it out. All right. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's the ultra millennial speed. Yeah, I was going to say, some, uh, Gen Z, some, yeah. that, that is a Instagram fast talking shorts. Yankee lady. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good job. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, I have to work on speeding up my ears to follow that. <laughs> Honestly, the thing about the app that uh, I find really powerful, I actually find it pretty hard to pray with technology. Like if I look at a screen or if I'm reading something mm -hmm. from my phone, it's just there's something about the light of the phone or computer, and then you try to close your eyes and enter into prayer. Uh, I find it pretty difficult. It's a lot easier for me with a physical book. But there's the app, our goal at the beginning <coughs> and uh, throughout the last few years has been to make it so it's kind of like technology without technology. You can pick a session, you press play, you plug in your headphones, or you just let it play on your phone and you close your eyes. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like your phone's not a part of it. It's like there's a guide there with you leading you through it. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, there's something about that where your eyes are closed the whole time that it allows me to enter, at least personally, much deeper into the prayer experience. Yeah. Nice. The app is really about cultivating a posture of silence in your life. And so it's technology without technology. Um, Someone sent me the Mother Teresa quote literally earlier today that it's in silence that we find prayer. It's in prayer that we find faith. It's in faith that we find love. It's in love that we find service. And it's in service that we find peace. And I think opening the door and creating those moments of silence in your life so that you can do the important listening is really what the, the app is about, even though it happens to be on your phone. God's always calling. All you got to do is pick up the phone, in this case, literally. Yeah, yeah. The, there was an old um, country western bluegrass song, uh, Turn Your Radio On. It was using the radio as an analogy for listening to God. It, 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 but now we have phones where you can listen to the radio or, in this case, listen to God uh, or listen to a way to pray to God so that in your prayer you can hear God himself. This is a, a very useful thing. Is part of this also a way to teach people to pray? Yeah, 100%. And I think you think about prayer, yeah, we might all know the memorized, or you might know the memorized prayers you uh, learn through the church. Mm -hmm. uh, you might know the, uh, some structures for how to, how to pray. But there's such a rich diversity of prayer and spirituality within the church. Um, and the depth of Carmelite spirituality, Ignatian spirituality, Lexio Divina, novenas, consecrations, there's so much beauty, uh, even just within, uh, within scripture, within all of the tradition of the church. And so uh, at, people at the beginning were asking the question, well, okay, you're gonna create some content, but eventually you'll run out. 
and we've barely even scratched the surface. I mean, there's 10,000 meditations on the app, and each one we barely get into, you know, Ignatian spirituality. We do a little, uh, Father Gallagher did a little Ignatian spiritual exercises on the app, and you barely have enough time to get into the depth of the beauty of Ignatian spirituality. So there's so much richness that it's, it's yeah, it's learning how to pray, but also learning all the different ways that you can pray and the different techniques and spiritualities that you can use at different stages in your life. One of the things we find is people come for one thing and they stick around for a lot of other things. And so, well, like, like, what do you mean by that? What would they come for? So let's use the young millennial, you know, the mother in the example for, uh, in the video that we, the first clip that we saw, you know, has five minute break in the day with the kids, wants a quick five minute prayer on, we have a, a series on stress and anxiety uh, in your day, led by a mental health Catholic expert. So she might come for that. She's like, I just need to find some, some peace in those five minutes, those quick breaks. But while she's in there, she might see on the homepage recommended, oh, by the way, we're in Advent. Uh, take an extra five minutes or 10 minutes with your family and do the daily Advent meditation journeying through uh, this past year, uh, scripture, um, biblical history leading up to the nativity and might be opened up to something in that way. Or she might see the examine, for example, and have no idea what it is, but it's right there next to what she came for and she'll click on it. And so what we find is once you're in and you start seeing the app in creative ways, kind of tries to prompt you to, to explore. Um, and I think once you have that taste of peace in your life, you want to bring it into more aspects of your life. And the, the app is useful in uh, having that at your fingertips without needing to be an expert on anything or, or know who to go to ask the question. All you have to do is, is hit play and you can expose the breadth of your understanding in that way. Another thing, too, uh, that would be important for any Catholic, the official prayer of the church is the liturgy of the hours. Do you do much to introduce people to that? We do. Night prayer is one of the most popular sessions we have on the app, and it's beautiful. Uh, Jonathan, we have several different guide options, but they're recorded in this way that's peaceful. It allows you to kind of enter into sleep if, if you're um, you know, in bed or you're closing your day. And uh, yeah, night prayer is one of the most popular ones. We're adding more as we go. I think we even have a clip on that uh, from your app on Catholic Night Prayer. Let's take a listen to that. Hello and welcome to Night Prayer. Take a moment now to call to mind any intentions you wish to bring to prayer. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a minute and make a brief examination of conscience. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. That's the opening of night prayer from the Roman Rite. And you know that people can just pray along with it in that quiet way. And you know, one of the things I, I don't—I suspect you don't have yet. I haven't looked, but um, any contact with the Eastern Rite liturgies of the hours. I don't think we have a chunk of that on the app yet, but we're that, working that on that. That would be something stuff. to look mm -hmm. into yeah. uh, because you know. The Byzantine Catholics have their Liturgy of the Hours, the Oriental Catholics, the Maronites and yeah. the Chaldeans, the Syriac. And this would, you know, one of the nice things about an app, you don't have to chop down any trees to, to add more to yeah, it. 100%. You know, that this is something that, you know, you can expand and that would be yeah. um, a, a really useful thing for yeah, Eastern we've, Catholics. We've started, we have some really powerful Chaldean prayers on the app nice. and we're, we're adding a good chunk more. 
Good. Father Simon does does those really beautifully. But yeah, you're right. The beauty of the app is uh, both thinking within your own life how much diversity is there within the church, but also within the church globally how much mm -hmm. diversity. And so mm -hmm. being able to pray with folks from the Philippines and Brazil and Mexico and Poland is a uh, is a, a massive blessing. So to that, we also have some of the traditional Latin prayers uh, that you would expect to find also in the app and. Uh, one in Aramaic, where we might uh, see if we can get you to add some uh, some others. Uh, we have uh, the Our Father in Aramaic as well. Sure. The other thing I the other thing I would say is, and as I was watching that video, the funny thing, one of the things we learned so early on, uh, is that everyone has a very particular taste when it comes to the speed at which someone prays and the voice. Uh, and so, it's one of the things we we really focus on a lot for the night prayer, as an example. There's four or five different guide options, male and female and you can change the speed so they go faster or slower. Uh, and so we really try to make it in a way where um, you can pray with what resonates with you. Oh, nice. See, this is you know, going to be a very nice way for folks not only to learn these prayer uh, methods, but also learn how to use these for cock the computers. <laughs> 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 we need to take a little break and we'll come back with some of your comments and questions along, along with that of our studio audience. So please stay with us. Right, welcome back. Uh, before we get to your questions and comments, I want to remind you that uh, Father Miguel Marie of the MFEA, our Fr Franciscan friars here at the network, is going on a pilgrimage to Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, and Switzerland. He'll be going there May 25th to June 5th, 2023. If you want more information, go to visitationpilgrimages.com or call 256-347-1475. 256-347-1475. It should be a great time. Ready for some questions? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. All right, let's get you up. We'll start off with Rebecca in Illinois. Rebecca, what can we do for you this fine evening? Hello, Father Mitch. How are you tonight? I'm well, very well. What can we do for you? Okay, my question, I'll get right to it. Um, I have um, a suggestion for the app that I saw on Facebook. They're, they have um, a prayer group where people can type in their prayers, and there's a whole group of people, and they can read each other's prayers and pray for them at the same time mm -hmm. as they um, enter them into the, um, into the phone as a... Um, a group prayer session that I've seen that I really enjoyed. I thought that would be good for this app. Uh, my question was if you have anything like that. Yeah. Do you have anything like that? Yeah, that's a great, uh, fortunately the answer is yes, but um, it's, it's a great idea. The, um, so there's two things that we have. One is that we just added actually a couple days ago, but there's an option to pray each session with an intention. And you can write in your intention, it takes over the screen with your intention, and then you can send that intention if that's to someone where you're praying for something specifically and it saves it. The other option is you can create a group within the app, a prayer group with your family or parish or Bible study, and you can share uh, what, you're, what you want folks to pray for, what you're praying for. And then other folks can, can respond and pray a rosary for that and it notifies you that they've prayed for you. Mm -hmm. We'll be expanding that a good bit. That's on the home tab for anybody who has the app. It's the little three dots in the top right. But we'll be expanding that uh, a good bit uh, over the next couple months because it's been pretty popular. So folks, uh, yeah. which makes a ton of sense, love praying for folks' intentions and intentions as a parish. So, yeah, I, I've joined some folks who have prayer groups on Facebook and such where they you know, will have 150,000 people praying the rosary together. Yeah. You know, um, this would be another way to do yeah. that yeah. Uh, and, and have large, larger groups of people 
who are praying together and uh, praying for each other's intentions. Rebecca, that's a great, great suggestion. We have a question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? I'm from New Orleans. And thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. And thank you for your courage to put this app out there. I had a question for you. What are the demographics of your viewing audience or that app who downloaded this audience or this app over time? Is it mostly older folks? Do you have a mix of millennials? Do you have high schoolers? Uh, what's the mix? Yeah, the at the beginning, we honestly, we built it for ourselves. And so... Uh, we, and we targeted, you know, mostly young professionals, 25 to 35 year old folks. And so that was the first big spike uh, was young professionals, young adults. And we still have a really good chunk of folks using the app. But what we saw really early on in the first year or two was people across all age ranges finding value from it, which actually was pretty surprising to us. But we've got, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's fascinating how evenly split it is. Mm -hmm. um, we're, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of folks, 55, 65, 75 plus, who use it, a bunch of folks who are raising, you know, crazy teenagers who are using it, and a bunch of young professionals still who are, who are finding a lot of value in it. So mm -hmm. it's been a blessing. Yeah, one of the things we found is that different people use it for different things, but that there's something for everyone. So the older you are, the more likely that the audio-guided piece tends to make a difference. Uh, I know uh, my parents, uh, thank God, recently got hearing aids, Bluetooth connected hearing aids. And so instead of reading f small print or things, you can just press play and have it in your ear. So the audio piece is nice. It, it's nice to also have everything in one place. Uh, if you're in that middle-aged parent group, that fitting it into your crazy daily life, like we saw in the woman's clip, on your drive, on your commute, uh, we hear from parents all the time uh, dropping their kids off to school. They have a 10-minute drive. They can fit it in, pray to the family on the way to, the, uh, to school. Mm -hmm. And then young people, the younger you are, the more likely you are to be asking those big questions like, like Alex was, like, does God exist? How is he... How do I get to know him? Or you might be connected to the wellness movement, living a holistic life and wanting to include faith in that. And there's content that speaks to that. So different people use different parts of the app, but there, there really is something for everyone. Yeah, and, and you have material for those who are uh, exercising. They might be at the gym. They might be on a treadmill or something. And th there's also prayer that you can do while you're in the process of doing exercise. Because yeah. that's also part of wellness and and the interest of a lot of folks. I mean, ideally, you could take every part of your day, no matter what you're doing, and dedicate it to prayer or offer it up. Yeah. And so, yeah, we have some great sessions led by some incredible athletes um, who lead folks through. Lou Holtz even gives a kind of inspirational little talk, but lead folks through uh, how to exercise or prepare for a game if you're, you know, competing in athletics. So, yeah. although we are not uh, professional athletes, you can listen to uh, Olympians, uh, winners of the Super Bowl, winners of the NBA Finals. Uh, lead in different prayers related to different athletic activities because yeah. we're certainly not the experts on that and they are and connecting you directly with the experts. Good, good. I may be able to give you a couple ideas on some <laughs> athletics too. <laughs> yeah. So my own favorite sports. I'm looking forward to it. We have another caller online. Thomas, you are in New Jersey. What can we do for you? Yes, hi, Father Mitch. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, basically, just a quick uh, question or comment, but um, do you have any f uh, future or current plans of uh, uh, promoting any, any, anything of the um, any uh, devotions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, such as the, uh, the Seven Sorrows uh, Rosary or the regular Rosary itself? Because they are filled with just some amazing promises that are attached to that, that, that I think everybody should know about. And then maybe we can talk about also the first Fridays to the Sacred Heart and also the first Saturdays as well. Yeah, so, so Catholics have a number of devotions. The Rosary, you do have. Yes, we do. And the Rosary of di different kinds of chaplets, chaplets of the angels, chaplets of the uh, seven sorrows that Thomas mentioned, yeah. uh, various devotions to the Sacred Heart for First Friday and other times. Do you have some of that already, or are you plan yeah. to do that? So the rosary is one of the most popular things on the app. We, I, that's what I use every day. Yeah. Um, we have the Seven Sorrows Rosary, which is really beautiful. We have a scriptural rosary. We have a chant rosary. There's a lot of really incredible rosaries that we have on the app that are really uh, allow you to dive much deeper into the rosary than you know, I do it every day, and it allows you to kind of uh, rediscover the rosary, which mm -hmm. especially the scriptural rosary seems to be really powerful, but also the Seven Sorrows rosary. Mm -hmm. um, we're adding a good chunk. Like I said, we're barely scratching the service. The, the uh, first Fridays and the Saturdays devotion, 
um, I think we'll add here in the next couple months. We just did a 33-day Marian consecration, which was one of the most popular things. Sister Miriam James did uh, let it, and it was really beautiful. So um, definitely big fans of Mary and Marian devotions and, and prayers, and so uh, it's one of the most popular things on the app, but still a lot more to add. And I would want to really encourage my viewers in this audience to get to that consecration, that 30 days of consecration to the Blessed Mother. Um, this makes a difference in lots and lots of people's lives. Yeah. Uh, it's an entrustment to her that I, I think is much, much needed and would like to promote that. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's one of the, we do these kind of seasonal challenges. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you can, it's still available on the app, but we go through these things. Lent is probably the biggest one we've got coming up where uh, folks get really excited to pray every day of Lent or do a Marian consecration or Ignatian spiritual exercises. So mm -hmm. it's awesome as a community, as we journey through the year, to journey through these different kind of prayers and devotionals. Wonderful. We have another Thomas online, but this one is from the great state of Tennessee. Thomas, what can we do for you today? How are you, Father? Fine, thank you, sir. What's up? Well, I'd like to make a comment and question to your guest, or for your guest. Uh, I try to pray the rosary every day, Father. Uh, sometimes I don't get to it. And so, uh, you know, Our Lady of Fatima said, uh, or told us to pray the rosary every day. And I just downloaded the app. Uh, do, do you find that using the app uh, helps you be more consistent in daily prayer? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 100%. I think that's one of the biggest things we find. So one, one of the things you'll see when you download the app is there's a home screen that has some greatest hits. There's the different sections of content. But right at the beginning is a daily routine. And as you find things that you want to engage with more frequently or build into your daily habit, you actually build a custom personal prayer routine so that, for example, if you want to start your day with the rosary, you can say 7 a.m., I want to do the rosary every day. It'll rotate through the different mysteries on the different days of the week. It'll send you that reminder in your phone. Um, and again, you could do you know, Angelus at noon, examine in the evening. Uh, one of the things, if, we, if you get to that five to seven prayers and you test things out, the odds is that you get to or above daily prayer are, are quite high. And so, that, again, that come for one thing, build that routine, and then find other things that fit into your day. It's all a reinforcing routine that we find to be pretty powerful. Yeah, the, I mean, honestly, that, that's my experience. I struggled for a while to build a daily habit, and it's, it's probably the most common experience on the app. I struggled for a while to build a daily habit of praying the rosary. I tried for a while, and it's, it's hard. Uh, you, you got the beads, you got to remember all the things you're supposed to say, and it also feels a bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. And there's something, you know, it, it is 18, 20 minutes or whatever. You, you can't do, although Mark Wahlberg does a rosary on there in, you know, I think 15 minutes or something crazy. But the, the standard rosary is 18, oh, well, 20 minutes. fast talking. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but, uh, but there's something about uh, just having it on your phone and just saying, okay, you know, it's 18, 20 minutes. I can dedicate this time. You know, I know it's not going to run over. I know I'm not going to forget where I am. I know I'm going to be led with this guide through this. And it's just made it so much uh, easier for me to pray a rosary every day. And you can do it while doing the dishes or, uh, you know, um, driving to work. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's probably the most common experience with folks on the app is uh, to pick as specific a thing as I can. Is it, It's really helpful to build a daily habit of praying the rosary. We were actually at the, our team was at the March for Life last week, and we were talking to, we had a little booth, and we were talking to some younger people, and there was a college student who was Protestant who was using the app, and maybe we can talk about people of different denominations uh, or faith traditions in the app, but came for daily scripture reflections. And on that home screen was a, an entire rosary section every day that was right next to the uh, scripture reflections, and one day he said, uh, you know, what the heck, uh, I'll give it a shot, and opened himself up to the rosary for the first time and told us that he, he was just converting to Catholicism just because of that placement of the rosary next to what he came for, again, coming for one thing and moving to something else. And so it really has been a, a huge uh, instrument, not just for people that already know what they want to do, but also for evangelization and reaching the, kind of the margins. Sure. Speaking of younger folks, let's get a call here from Sean in Ohio. Sean, what can we do for you? Thanks, Father Mitch, for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have three daughters and a son, and two my oldest daughters are teenagers, and I think you're already starting to answer those questions, but uh, they're on their phone a lot, and I just 
uh, would like them to have their faith integrated as part of their daily life. And I just wanted to know if you could speak to how uh, an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old girl could uh, benefit from this app. Yeah, I would. I would hope that. I mean, we have we have sections for uh, we have a kids section that goes all the way through teenage uh, to to younger children. We have Catholic schools that we partner with and elementary schools. So, prayers and introductions for all ages. But especially as at, as a teenager, uh, you know, we we see a lot of teenagers who use the app just like anybody would and love it and grow deeper in a, a relationship with with God through it. Whether that's sleep sessions at night, like Alessandra was sharing the story of uh, someone who's just scrolling all night and can't fall asleep, so being able to use night prayer or something to close your day, uh, or whether it's music uh, to sub out the you know rap or hip-hop that you might be listening to on a regular basis with some Gregorian chant or some beautiful spiritual music, or if it's building a daily habit of the rosary as a family or you know as an individual. There's the, probably my favorite video that we've received is we got a, a video of a dad who and I know your, your, your children are, are older than this, but we got a video of a dad who had, a, I think, probably an eight-year-old. Um, and they were in the car, and every time they'd get in the car, they'd uh, plug in the phone and do a little prayer together. And he thought that she hated it. And they get in the car, and they didn't do it for a couple minutes. And she goes, Dad, can, can we listen to Hallow, please? Can we do a Hallow? Which was this, like, beautiful, uh, uh, her desire to want to wanna pray was, was this beautiful example of, of what God can do through through um, praying together as a family. But. A, a, a few more things on, on that. I think it's one of the things we heard very early on and, and saw certainly in ourselves was particularly young people who are used to technology like Instagram and other social media expect a certain look and feel when it comes to technology. And I think we try and really make an accessible, modern looking experience that is what they're used to in their other apps. So it raises to a certain kind of quality of user experience that even if it's the greatest content in the world, if it doesn't look and feel like what they're used to, they won't use it. And so we try and make that feel comfortable. I would also say speaking, you know, sometimes it's hard as a, as a teenager. Uh, you know, we weren't, it wasn't that long ago since we were, we were, we were them. Um, it could be hard to approach parents or teachers or even peers out of judgment to ask some of those tough faith questions. And so having a private resource that you can explore on your own with people that you may trust or look up to. So someone like uh, Ali Odaro, who used to, was a, a model on America's Next Top Model and is an amazing Catholic uh, woman in her faith. Or Maddie Pruitt, who was on The, the Bachelor Show as a contestant and uh, tra stayed true to her Christian values amidst, you know, was, was a challenging environment and talk about things like body image or how to, how to love yourself amidst uh, peer pressure or for young men, th uh, not just young men, but young people, uh, addictions, things like pornography, other things. And so speaking to, the, to what's in front of them with people that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. with uh, so that they can then find uh, more confidence in having those conversations maybe as a family. Mm hmm. I'm glad you guys are doing this because I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. Where's John Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> we would uh, try to get him if he could. But, yeah. I, I cried the first day that I found out John Wayne was no longer alive as a child. Is that so right? Was, yeah. So I hope you know that he died a Catholic. I did, did know that, yes. Yeah, yeah. He, on his deathbed, he was received into the church, mm. uh, got baptized. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, the, it really is good that folks of your generation that, you know, have this background that, you know, can introduce younger folks to people they look up to and know uh, that I would have no idea about. Uh, this, is, this is a truly great thing. Well, praise God. Yeah. And the, the, this idea that the kids want to pray, did, both of you are dads yes. of fairly young children, correct? Yeah, yeah. How's old is your oldest? My oldest is like two in a few months. Yeah. So yeah. she's... And do you have anything that would be even for those little kids? Uh, we have a few things. There's like a saint stories thing. There's, there's a couple things that try to... I mean, two is pretty young to, yeah, to oh get her yeah, to sit yeah, still. Yeah. You kind of have to be a Disney song. So that's, that's pretty much <laughs> it. But, um, but we do have... And we just got a story from... Actually, there's a couple stories that were really powerful, but the one, you know, the, the dad was uh, using the app uh, regularly, again, in the car, like they're driving to Mass or something. We have a family Mass prep that as you're driving to Mass, you can kind of listen to how a kid might be able to try to understand Mass. Mm -hmm. But their kid 
uh, for the first time said, Dad, I, I think I want to be a saint. And I think it was, you know, a six-year-old or something like that. He's yeah. like, oh, man, what a cool thing to, to be able to share. And there was this other um, <laughs> kid who was, I think, probably four or five, and she would get afraid at, at night uh, when, you know, in the dark. Yeah. And so she had somehow a device, an iPod or something that she could play a halo on, and she... Uh, her parents wrote in and said this was the only thing that allowed her to not be afraid at night other than her parents, which, like, as a father of a young kid, there's nothing more powerful to me than, like, your daughter is afraid at night and you go in and try to comfort her. So for Hallow to be able to be uh, something like that for, for a young child is a, yeah. is a tremendous blessing. But So, yeah, we have some stuff, but a two-year-old is tough to, tough to wrangle. So. Sure, <laughs> sure. My, uh, my three-month-old loves the music loud in the car, but I haven't get, been able to get a user quote from him yet, so I will <laughs> report back on him. Uh, our, our kids' content is organized into littles, middles, and teens, so mm -hmm. kind of three to seven, eight to 12, and then 13 to mm -hmm. 18. Mm -hmm. And for the littles and middles, we have a guess that saint kind of um, daily uh -huh. that is between two and three minutes and one thing we hear from from parents of uh, kids in that age is it goes great with brushing teeth because it's about as long as you want them to brush their teeth and so they get while they're brushing their teeth to listen they give uh, facts about their life some of their spirituality and by the end there's a moment to, to guess and see if you know who the saint is and then it's revealed and you're done with tooth brushing so that can be that can be a very practical tip for parents there you go and um you know can you get this on alexa uh, no, not yet. Alexa's okay. a, a tough one, but you can, I mean, you can have it on any phone. We have a website, so you can access it through the website. Um, we actually, you can ac access it on Kindles now, too, uh, Amazon Good. devices. Good. Um, and so, yeah, we're working on working on adding it to everything. But you, So you could play it through your phone to Alexa, but uh, not just straight from the Alexa yet. Because um, I know that you know, I, I've done a little bit of prison work in my uh, Christmas special was at a yeah. prison, and the uh, prisons are going to give uh, these devices to the inmates for a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but they and they'll control material that gets in there. But this would be one of the kinds of material that would be very useful to plenty of the uh, offenders. You know that they would uh, be able to download this and pray with this would be terrific. So I'll, yeah, I'll try to make sure I get that over yes, to please. the guys in prison ministry. You can get the Hallow app by going to hallow.com. And you can also download on the App Store or Google Play. App Store is for iPhones. Right, or iPads. And Google and iPads. Correct, yeah. And Google Play is on Androids. Right. See, I'm learning some Nailed of this it. stuff. You got it. You crushed yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the danger of letting old guys play with these things. <laughs> so, but at any rate, this would be a tremendous resource for any of you. If you're driving, this, you mentioned so many times driving, there's a lot of foolishness that gets fairly boring on radio, this is, you know, the kind of content that would be, you know, a source of wisdom, and that's uh, uh, itself a great thing. Okay. Well, you, it sounds to me that you, you still have a lot more that you want to do. Yeah, it, with whatever God wills, but yeah. it's been a, had you, I mean, a thousand people using the app when we first started would have seemed impossible, so... Uh, you know, millions of folks using it is crazy to imagine. But it, it's it's really just a testament to the the biggest thing we've learned through this is just a surrender, and it's just been miraculous to watch God and what He's been able to do with um, this in folks' lives. And I think this this is part of the role of the Holy Spirit to stir, like some of the people you mentioned, to go to this app. They hear about it, and the Holy Spirit just gives these actual graces that opens them to start praying and listening to Him. It's great. Thank you for doing this, Praise and thank God. you for being here with us. And thank you all for joining us this evening. May Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you. May our Lord lead you in all of your ways by His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
We can let you know about wonderful things like this Hallow app and all the other shows that we have only because the network is brought to you by you. That's how our Lord inspired Mother Angelica to establish this. So we ask that you keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill. And if you do, we'll be able to pay our bills too. Thank you and God bless. Thank you.